I kind of want to know why you got into NVIDIA in the first place. And then if you take a look at the reasons why you got out of it and then why you wouldn't get back into it right now. Yeah, hi, Dom. Thanks for having me back. Um, so, yeah, first of all, I, I look for stocks that I think are undervalued and sometimes growth stocks can be undervalued. And in the summer of 2022, uh, you know, NVIDIA was falling quite a bit, but I still felt that it was the leader in the chip area, and I thought the stock was very undervalued. So that's when I started buying it, um, and I kept buying it all the way down to, uh, you know, approximately, I think, 125 or so is where I got it at the lowest. Um, but as you said, the stock has absolutely surged, and I started getting a little bit nervous, uh, you know, for a couple of reasons. Um, one is that I think it's now overvalued, and I've heard the arguments that, you know, it's not overvalued, but I think it's overvalued, especially if you look at it on a price-to-sales basis. But also, I have fairly large positions in, in ETFs such as uh, QQQ, SPY, and SMH, and NVIDIA is 26% of the SMH. So I decided I didn't need to own the stock individually anymore, and that's the main reason I sold it. All right, so it's a, a risk management and allocation decision. No no doubt there. No one's going to blame you for that. But you got house money, so to speak, right now, Bahan. Where, where exactly would we roll that into? I mean, cash is still yielding 4 to 5% in savings accounts, even more so in certain parts of the Treasury market, money market funds. Do you stay there, or do you deploy elsewhere where there is value with the market still hovering near record highs? Actually, I'm doing a little bit of both. I mean, I do uh, have a large position in Treasury bills, and I'm still rolling those over, um, primarily very short-term Treasury bills at well over 5%. Uh, and I'm happy to take that money with money that I'm not sure how to invest right now. But I'm also, as you said, uh, looking more in the value area, especially dividend-paying stocks. And uh, my latest big buy was Pfizer. Um, just a couple of days ago, I put some money into Pfizer because I think that it is a very undervalued stock. Um, I think the stock has really sold off primarily because we've overcome our fears about COVID. But this is a company that has, you know, 112 drugs currently in the pipeline. And I'm betting that at least uh, a few of those are going to hit pretty big. And it's yielding, you know, well over 6%. And I'm happy to take that yield. Does that mean that you're getting into it despite the fact that the momentum clearly is with some of these GLP ones within healthcare and pharma specifically. We're talking about, of course, names like Novo Nordisk, Eli Lilly, amongst others. Is there a reason why you think that that's the better play right now versus, say, an Eli Lilly or, an, or a, Novo, a Novo? Yeah, so I tend to be a long-term buy and hold investor. I mean, NVIDIA was a bit of an exception because I held that stock only for a couple of years. But um, when I buy a stock, I tend to buy for the long term. I'm looking for good dividends over time. And I think that because of those GLP-1 uh, drugs, many of these other pharmaceutical companies have really run up a lot. And I'd be pretty hesitant to jump into them right now at their, at their current prices. So I would rather go with something like a Pfizer that's been so oversold that everybody hates that they're pretty much just giving the stock away. And I'm happy to take it at current prices.